You're listening to the Oz TV podcast, only on the Oz Network. Hey, this is Billy Garcia from Survivor Cook Island, and thank you for joining us on the Oz Network Survivor Ghost Island recap. Today, I'm joined by none other than Survivor Caramoans, Matt the Beer Bischoff. What's going on, man? How you doing? I'm doing great, brother. I'm doing great. How you loving the season so far? Man, I'm totally digging this season right off the bat. I don't know if it's because of the theme or because I like the characters, but um, last season it took me a little bit to kind of really get into the season. And toward the end of the season, I was rooting for Ben to win, and it became a pretty good season at the end. Um, this season is starting off very interesting and i'm i'm digging it so far all right all right i'm glad to hear it because i love this season also and i and i, and I really dig the cast and uh, in my last podcast uh the guys i was hanging with uh ben and hi and colin they were totally dissing the cast and i was like totally in the minority there so i just uh i just right bit on. my tongue <laughs> yeah yeah right on man heck yeah well thanks for having me on on this week man my pleasure, brother. My pleasure. All right, so uh, the episode kicks off with uh, the, as usual, the aftermath of Tribal Council, and uh, Angela's totally feeling stabbed in the back. Um, but uh, Dominic and Wendell, uh, they kind of have a sidebar, and uh, I guess Operation I Really Do Have an Idol comes into play all of a sudden, and uh, it, it's very interesting the the. Uh, the uh, uh, the conversation that Wendell and Dominic has had. I really like those guys. I love those guys. I think Wendell is, is flying under the radar. I think Dominic is a strong player, you know. Um, I think he's very smart. I think he's very sneaky. I'm actually a, a big fan of his. I think he could stir this game up a bit. And you never know, just when you think that you're on the bottom and you have no options, you know, um, Morgan, you know, gives him the legacy advantage. So not only does he have the legacy advantage now, but he also has an immunity idol. So he's definitely has a lot of good cards in his hand right now, moving on to the next segment of, of this game. So, yeah, yeah. Um, he does, he, he seems to be holding a lot of cards, even though the episode starts out with, uh, Basically, him and Wendell saying that the uh, disaster is has struck, and they they realize they're on the bottom. Uh, but as the episode progresses, and we get to the uh, to the very interesting reward challenge, this is one of my favorite challenges. This, this isn't the first time they've done this; they've done this a few times. But this is one of my favorites of all time, which is what what I call the ring wrestling water challenge. <laughs> well, here's the great thing that I was really excited about. Like, um, well, first of all, Angela, as we spoke about a minute ago, was mad after tribal and coming back to camp. Angela lives in my town. I was at oh. An Angela's viewing party last week. So nice. she's a, lo she's a local Cincinnati person. So it's really cool to be able to watch her, watch herself on TV. Um, and last night when I watched the show, I watched it at my house, but I'll be continually going to her viewing parties, which is really, really cool. Roger Bingham and Marcus Lehman from Survivor Gabon and myself went last week to support her. So nice. it's really cool. So, um, but the thing that was really cool about not both the ring challenge, but also the immunity challenge that happened, both of those challenges were in survivor caramoan which was my season yeah well on my season the very first thing we did we got dropped off on the island jeff probst introduced the game and we immediately went into that challenge so i know firsthand how brutal that challenge can be and my ass got handed to me by francesca <laughs> in that challenge <laughs> but it is, but it is a classic survivor challenge the water was beautiful fiji's a beautiful place yeah. so it's cool that they're able to have water challenges but it can become very very physical you know what i mean yeah for sure for sure and, and one of the cool things about the reward challenge was the spot that they did it in it was like this dune in the middle of the lagoon 
I know. So it was such a cool aerial view. It's one of my favorites of the season so far. Yeah, um, it was. The prize was prize with peanut butter and jelly and some bread. It wasn't it wasn't the greatest reward ever, but uh, you know, it's Survivor, so what? <laughs> right, right. You know, it, it's kind of like one of those things. Like in my season, I never won pretty much anything, but it would be nice to win. You know, you're out there. You know how it is. You're yeah. you don't you don't have food and water, so something as simple as peanut butter and jelly is a big deal. But you know. Is if I would have lost that challenge and not had peanut butter and jelly, so be it. Life goes on. Yeah, same here, same here. <laughs> so, uh, so after the uh, uh, the challenge, uh, we get the um, they they choose uh, the winning tribe chooses uh, a player to, to go to uh, Ghost Island. So it's different from the previous episodes. That in the previous episodes we waited till the immunity challenge. This time we did it during the reward challenge, and that player comes back for the immunity challenge and has to go to tribal. So right, it's, so, it's a different take. Yeah, so Kellen, who obviously, oh, you know, it, <laughs> yeah, Kellen, Kellen goes to Ghost Island and she has the chance to, you know, basically not cast a vote at the next tribal, but get an advantage in the game or yeah. not take that advantage. So it's kind of like, um, you're you're gambling, like which is the better option? And when you're out there playing the game, it's kind of like your mind is always thinking, what is the better option to to further my game and to get me in the best position? She chose not to give up her vote. Who knows what um, her advantage in the game could have been? It could have been a big advantage, or it couldn't have been uh, much of an advantage at all. But I think that in that in that spot, it's kind of hard to say what I would do. Me, I probably would have went ahead and gone for the advantage in the game because any advantage you can get in the game of Survivor is a is a big thing, and I probably would have done that. But hey, she was playing it safe, and that's what she chose to do. Yeah, it's because uh, she she admitted before she even opened her hand to reveal the rock that uh, it was her, her worst nightmare was to to get the rock. Right, so, right. Yep, so yep. Uh, yeah, I kind of figure. Okay, she first of all, this was a self fulfilling for uh, fulfilling prophecy where she got her worst nightmare. Right. <laughs> um, yep, they really yep. played up that the survivor gods got her. Yep. Um And then when she got there, I think she kind of took it as it's Russian roulette. You know, <laughs> you right. could be ending your own game by by picking to play th this game and then losing and losing your vote and not able to save yourself from being voted out. Right. So. I it's, can see her spin on it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I can too. It's tough. And the thing is, when you're out there, you know, it, it's such a surreal experience just playing the game of Survivor. I'm a huge fan. So when when I first went out there, I was just at, you know, when we first saw Jeff Probst and we're doing this challenge, I was like, oh my God, I'm actually playing the game of Survivor. Like, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. So I think there could be a um, a bit of that going on um, with her, um, you know, when she was on Ghost Island. It's it's probably pretty overwhelming, the unknown, and ah, uh, what do I do? And she just decided to play it safe. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I totally agree. Um, fast forwarding here a little bit, um, we see uh, uh, Dominic sort of uh, make a move with Laurel, where he tells her he has the idol this is operation i have i really do have an idol she mentions hey that means you lied to me and he completely covered it perfectly by saying hey it's an idol like this is what you're supposed to do with it so that was so well played that was probably his most well played moment of the game thus far dominic the way he handled laurel oh i agree and laurel is very very smart person obviously from her you know college background she's yeah. kind of, she's kind of the you know I, I mean the nerd of the tribe i mean i i don't think she's a nerd but if you're if you're looking <laughs> at the way cast members go she's athletic and she's very smart and and you know he's got a smooth talking way about him to yeah. where where which is exactly what you got to do is talk your way out of certain situations and it is true it's like Hey, 
you know, it's an idol and it's, it's a touchy subject. So I, I'm only going to reveal um, about the idol when the time is right. And that was the time that he needed to, to make that play, to tell her that he has it, to gain her trust, to get her on his side. And uh, I think it was well played. Chris acting the way that he did played a role in Laurel, Laurel's decision and that he was so gung ho at let's take out Dominic. And I don't know how you feel about it, but if somebody were to bark orders at me and do this or else, it would have the opposite effect. I'd want to take out that person barking the orders. Well, I definitely agree with you, Billy, because I think Chris comes across, he's this uh, dominating looking, good looking, muscular leadership role. And it's kind of like he's real confident within himself. I guess the guy's a model in real life, whatever. Um <laughs> So he's coming across with that really strong personality to where that could rub people the wrong way. He needs to kind of tone it down a couple notches. And the <laughs> thing is, Dominic Dominic sees that. Dominic wants to get rid of Chris. And Dominic is using that to his advantage by kind of getting everyone to go against Chris. Yeah, yeah. It's... uh. I definitely like the way Dominic and Wendell, for that matter, have gone from the bottom, from the outhouse to the penthouse almost. And, you know, with so many advantages now, they've got uh, two people on their side that uh, basically are jumping ship almost, you could say. It's, it's, it's definitely looking like Dominic is a player to watch. Dominic is a player to watch, and I also think Laurel is going to really come out of her shell. She even said in, in the episode that, hey, I've been, I've been kind of keeping it low-key, but now it's time for me to make my mark in this game. So I really think you're going to see her start playing the game more and getting some more airtime and confessionals. And, you know, I'm also a big fan of, of Donathan. I think Donathan is kind of like, you know – observing and listening and seeing what's going on and not trying to be the target. I think he can go very far in this game because he knows right now you got Chris that could be a target or Dominic big personalities that are trying to be the leaders and this and that and the other. So I don't know. I, th I think, um, I think things are going to really stir up in this, in this tribe. And I think that, yeah, you never know. You can be on the bottom one second and the next minute you can be back in the game yeah yeah and, and donathan is such such a cute personality such a cool southern accent he could read the phone book and i would totally be entertained <laughs> oh yeah uh, i mean watching pre-game stuff I, I was already a fan of donathan you know he's just people are gonna like him and that's the thing he's a likable guy He's, he doesn't look like the biggest physical threat, so people aren't going to be threatened by that. And he's a guy that could could coast and make it all the way to the end of this game. And because he's so likable, people could vote for him, you know what I mean, and, and give him the million bucks. So it's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So the immunity challenge comes along, and uh, another one of these great ones, like you mentioned, it was also on your season. Uh, they have the treasure chest inside of a cage out in the water. They have to uh, swim out, wait until everybody's there, climb up the cage and in, and then undo the the uh, the knots that open up the gate, pull pull or or drag uh, the heavy heavy chest to uh, to shore, and then put it on a track where it only gets you like halfway. Then you got to hook part of the track to pull it in place to get you the rest of the way. And then once you get to uh, once you get to the platform, you open up the chest, and there are balls there. And then you basically play a game that we kind of play in New York City, where you're trying to get things caught, you know, on a yeah. on a on the top of a ledge just for the fun of it. Um, we do in New York City, and this was interesting. As I, I'm gonna let you tell me your take because you actually did this, but well, well. So here's the deal: I did this challenge in my season, and First of all, you're swimming out in the ocean with your tribe and going out to that cage, which is exhausting, swimming just in the ocean current itself. Yeah. <laughs> climbing, climbing up, 
And when you dive down, you got to untie the rope to release the gate in order to have everyone swim through that gate and then bring that chest to shore. That chest is so freaking heavy, Billy. Mm. You don't realize it as a viewer. You're like, ah, it looks, it, it is so heavy that it takes the entire tribe, all your energy to get that chest all the way from out in 20 foot deep ocean water all the way to the shore and then bring it up and slide it across that train track basic thing. Yeah. And it is exhausting. And to, uh, like you said, to have to then, you know, take the ring to grab the next part of the track. You watch the challenge and Chris was in the challenge. It was Chris and someone else trying to pull and they're two really strong guys. You got to have the whole tribe pull that rope or you're not <laughs> going to get the next part of that track. So it's extremely, extremely difficult. And this challenge was amazing in the fact that it was the most come from behind victory yeah. in, the, in probably the history of Survivor. I thought the other team had it made. And then that's why it shows to never, ever give up. They designed these challenges in a way to where the person that's losing the challenge can catch up. So they caught up yeah. because the other, the other people were trying to throw those balls up onto that perch yeah. and, and couldn't do it. They were knocking their balls off and this, that, and the other. Yeah. And, and, uh, and they came from behind and won it. And it was very exciting to watch. And it was a, an epic come from behind victory. To see Sebastian who, who, you know, the guy, the guy, you know, he's supposed to be like, uh, like, you know, postmodern survivors answer to Ozzy, basically. Right. <laughs> um, you know, to, <laughs> to see him struggle to get that last ball up there, it, you know, on TV, it came off like he choked. But we haven't been there. We just know, like, it's, it's a lot more than just choking. It's, he, he had this little spot to get that ball in. Otherwise, he'd knock his other balls off. Yep, yep. So, yeah. And, it, and the thing is, man, too, is like your adrenaline's pumping and something that could seem so easy to the viewer, like, oh, that'd be so easy to toss a ball up and land on that thing. It's, it's easier said than done from the couch. When you're out there playing these challenges, yeah. it is way harder than it looks on TV. No question. And they go on for a lot longer than, than the TV edit shows. Right, a lot, right. A lot longer. Uh, but I just think, like, I feel like, you know, Sebastian's the way the balls were were landed on there, he had to get like a corner, whereas the other tribe they had a nice spot dead center. So it was right. just kind of a little bit of luck in the way the balls landed before that last ball that helped yep. out that 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 you know basically caused one law one to lose and one to win, yep. in my opinion. Yep, you're exactly right, man. So. uh so we get a we we get the 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 big come from behind win that you mentioned, and uh, Malolo uh, wins wins the ch uh, I'm sorry they lose the challenge and the VD who went last time they're safe. So after all that uh, stuff with Dominic and all that, uh, I honestly thought they were going to go to tribal. That's what they were setting up. So I actually got blindsided by the win of this this comeback win. It was a great setup. For the but, comeback. Yeah, it was. It was. And it would be interesting to see, you know, if that tribe would have went to tribal council, how how it would have played out. You, you just never know. Never know. Yep. So we get back to Malolo and then the the James Idol becomes a thing where you get the original four Malolo uh, there at the bottom and the, the five Navidi that came over to Malolo, they're at the top. They had the numbers. And since nobody is sent over to the Ghost Island for this tri uh, the tribal council, that means they're five strong and they stay five strong. Uh, right. So, so uh, Michael, the youngest guy uh, on this on this uh, season and tied for like the youngest to ever play at 18 years old. He lied and said he was 23 to to his tribe, but he's 18. He concocts this idea of of. Uh, using the James idol and telling a little bit of a white lie with it and that it counts for double because James had two of them. 
which I think I think was a genius plan. Last yeah. night when I when I was watching Tribal, I was very impressed with Michael. Like you said, being 18 years old, he's definitely very very intelligent, and um, he's playing this game um, by saying that it it was basically an idol that worked for two people was very smart. I'm very surprised that no one else said, "Hey, let me see." Let me see the back of that thing. No one questioned it. No one questioned it. And the thing is, is it was it was a brilliant play by him. And the thing is, is I was, you know, when when Brendan actually got voted out, I was bummed because they actually going that it was a wild tribal and I thought there would have been a way that they could have saved themselves from that idol. But at the end of the day, it didn't work out, I think, the way they maybe intended it to. Yeah, because it was basically a crapshoot. He had the, he, you know, he when he went to go play the idol and, and continued the line, so he's going to play it on himself and Bradley, he turned around to look at, 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 at the tribe sitting down to try to quickly gauge a reaction to see if he's going to play it on one of the guys or, or, or play it on Stephanie. And to the credit of the 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 Navidi five that's on Malolo, they, they must have got, they must have had a good poker face you know collective poker face going because he guessed wrong and he guessed stephanie and you know it's it's basically a, a crapshoot he didn't oh yeah he didn't. it is and i want to say something i i don't know about you and i feel bad saying this because i don't know the guy in real life yet we'll probably meet him at an event at some point but yeah. that that bradley guy all yeah. of a sudden i didn't even know who this guy was until <laughs> this episode and I was so annoyed um, by him, and I was wanting him. I was just like, "Oh God!" I just the guy annoyed me. Now in real life, he may be a super cool guy, but he was cocky and arrogant, and, and I just I, I I'm not a fan of him um, in the game of Survivor. That's for sure. I don't know what your thoughts were on him, but I would have been happy to see Bradley go. <laughs> well, I, I felt like. I felt like um, the goal of the Malolo Four, the original, the the original Malolo Four, was to vilify Bradley, and right. they were just, to their credit, they they did it expertly to where it's hard not to dislike them, based on not only the way they painted him, but what they threw at him, hoping that they'd get a certain reaction back, and they got that negative reaction back. They got him to to be cocky and to, to come off as unlikable. So it was, to me, it was less Bradley and more the genius of those four. And if that move would have worked in its entirety, that would have been like one of the top 12 best moves of all time, in my opinion. Yeah, it, it was, uh, you know, like I said, it was a, a great tribal and, and you kind of don't know exactly what is going to happen and someone always gets blindsided and that's what makes this show amazing to watch as a viewer because just when you think it's going to play out one way it plays out another way and we're still so early into this season that i think a lot of gamers are going to come out even yeah. more some people that are kind of chilling wait till the merge and and things are going to get really stirred up but to me so far it's been uh, an interesting and entertaining season. I was sad to see Brendan go. I know he has applied for many, many years. He's a huge, huge fan of the show. So for him to not be able to just kind of like I got voted out early, you know, I was a seventh out. I didn't get to make the merge. I didn't get to know what it's like to have a family visit or to win an individual immunity challenge. And I've been reading some of uh, Brendan's, um, you know, post game interviews and it was really devastating to him and i thought one of the one of the cool things that he did he's a family guy and he he gave this um on on his confessionals he gave this like uh, he would hide his pinky and give this three sign of three it was a secret sign to his wife and his kids Aww, yeah which i thought was pretty cool it was it was really cool so Hats off to him. It's always really neat for me to see a huge fan of the game um, play. And, you know, it's it's the luck of the draw. Yeah. Sure. I mean, it's if you win challenges and make it far into the game, you can make it deep into the game. 
it's it's just kind of like the luck of what tribe you get on and how it plays out. Yeah, and he was doing he was he was sitting pretty until the tribe swap. So that that pretty much did him in. Yep, the dreaded tribe swap. I, <laughs> yeah. I like I I messaged him on Instagram today and said, "Dude, I feel your pain. It's like it, try, you can have a good game going, and boom, they. But this is what you sign up for, Billy. Yeah, you you sign up for a game that is that could change in the blink of an eye, and they did a tribe swap very early in this in this season. They usually do it a little bit later, so you you never know. I mean, it's it's new school Survivor. There's a lot of idols, a lot of advantages in play, and I'm I'm excited to see what else Ghost Island has in store for us this season. I hear you. It, I feel like the tribe swap got me reversed. If it had happened one round sooner, I'd have stayed in the game. Yeah. <laughs> it, got, it, it happened one round later, and it did me in. But, yep. uh, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. So here we go. We're going to uh, buy it, rent it, or bin it. What do you think of this episode? I'm going to say buy it. I, I like the episode. I like the challenges. I think the tribal council was good. Uh, I think there was a lot of good gameplay. So that's what I'm going to say. Yeah, I'm with what you. Are you say? Yeah, I'm with you on this one with buying it. Uh, not only were the challenges, to, in my opinion, the best challenges of the season so far. I felt like this was the best tribal council of the season, and thus the best episode of the season. So yeah, this is a total buy for me. Right on. <laughs> All right, brother. So uh, we've got some listener questions uh from everywhere from from facebook to twitter the email so uh yeah we got some people that uh want to hear from you here we got isaac uh bauer he said uh matt uh being from cincinnati like angela and myself what is your favorite chill chili in the area okay so cincinnati is well known for chili so uh, I would there's uh, there's several here, but I would say Skyline Chili for me is my favorite. Okay, Skyline. All right, see now I have to try it when I go down to Cincinnati later this year. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll Billy. I will treat you to some Skyline Chili when you come here in June. All right, sounds great, man. <laughs> sounds great. All right, Lad Undercover Twenty Two uh, says for each of us. Who are our top five survivor facial hairs of all time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Um, <laughs> top five survivor facial hairs of all time. Okay, let me see. I would say an obvious one is Rupert. Yeah, he's got to be on the list. Okay, I would say um, Ben, who won last season, had a, had a nice beard. All right. Um, okay, so that's two. Who uh, else has a good beard? I, I think Max had a had a really really oh. ZZ Topish looking beard. <laughs> Max Max has a great beard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we've Max is you know Max Dawson. Shout out to him, huge fan, and uh, we've had some beard discussions before. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he makes the list. All uh, right. Uh, uh, okay, uh, Dan Foley. Okay. Dan Foley had a really nice uh, goatee and sideburn action going on in his in his season. So he actually shaved it off last year. He came oh, to an event in yeah. Cincinnati and he shaved it, and he kind of looked a little bit uh, uh, I don't know, Normal. girlish. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a really rare one at you. I'm gonna go yeah. with Ralph. He had this really, oh, really unique beard to go with his man sweater. <laughs> oh, dude. I mean, Ralph, I will never, no one will, like, the, the main thing I know about Ralph is his hillbilly voice and the hair that he should have got waxed off his back before, <laughs> before he went out there. Oh, yeah, man. man. I, I am glad I am not in that business because I would not want to see him walk in the door. <laughs> well, and, 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 and real quick, here's one thing I got to say. Most guys look way better with beards. And what I hate is I'll see a guy that makes it far in Survivor and he's got a really cool beard going. And then he goes to Ponderosa and the first thing he does is shave it off. And I'm like, uh... that's blasphemy yeah 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 for sure oh my oh there we go <laughs> for those listening on audio matt showing off his uh his his beard his very very long beard 
<laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. All right, so we got Mitch, and uh, he wants to know who was the biggest diva at your tribe, and also uh, who was uh, the most annoying that you you would be pleased to send off to Exile Island or Ghost Island or wherever. Uh, so they're asking me about on uh, my season, yeah, basically your season. Okay, okay. So um, most annoying on my tribe, I would have to say Shamar. If you're talking about <laughs> My original go to tribe, uh, Shamar was a, a big pain in the ass 24 7. I'm totally cool with Shamar outside of the game. Shamar, if you're watching, cheers to you. But in the game, he was unbearable. Wow. And um, Diva, that's interesting because honestly, like all of the girls in, in my season, I was really tight with. Um, so, so it's Shamar again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, hey, you know exactly. He wasn't Diva. We'll we'll go with that because I really like you have on my you have Sherry, Julia, Allie, Hope, and Laura, all sweethearts. So yeah, Shamar, you were a diva out there while we were, while we were trying to make shelter and this and that. You were complaining about how hot it was. And how you were thirsty. So that's very diva ish. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh so Ruth Marie he she she loves to play these little games, so I'll give you the game. Uh if you were sent to one of those uh those exile reward things like the Cochrane reward from a couple seasons ago, uh which of these would you pick for yourself? The vote tripler, which your vote counts triple at Tribal Council, uh the spy bunker. You get to hang out in an underground bunker underneath the shelter and eavesdrop for about 30 minutes. Um, the vote reveal, which after the tribal council, you get to find out what everybody voted, but only you. And the mutiny idol, which is someone gets voted out, you play the idol. Instead of them leaving the game, they just get sent to the other tribe. Hmm. I would say option number one, the triple <laughs> vote. That's, yeah. See... I, I've played this game before, and it's always a triple vote because that is just too powerful. It is too powerful. I could care less about the spy shack, although I love Tony's little spy shack. <laughs> I was I was a fan of Tony Vlachos, especially on the first season that he played, which he won. I really enjoyed it. And uh, the llama was yeah. I, 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 would, I would go with uh, option one, triple vote. <laughs> all right, all right, same here, same here. All right, so Richard. Wants to know, simple question, when was the last time you saw Corinne? The last time I saw Corinne was, honestly, um, at our finale. I, I communicate with Corinne all the time via social media. I love Corinne. Corinne is hilarious. She's one of a kind. Um, a lot of people hate her like a villain, but I, 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 I got to spend a lot of time with Corinne um, you know, after we got voted out, um, obviously at Ponderosa and then we had to stay out of the country for a while. So I got to spend a lot of time with Corinne and she's super cool. I consider her a friend of mine and we've had a lot, a lot of good times together. And I'm hoping that this year I'll get to see her once again. Nice. All right. So Sasha, here's another one who likes to play games. This is a game of kiss, slap, hug, run away or wrestle. Those are your options. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Don. Don, I would say slap because. <laughs> and and the th I'll tell you why. Because Don, Don was the one that was gunning for me to get voted out um, on my season. So, Don, I'm sorry. I'd have to slap you. <laughs> All right. Well, we mentioned her already. Corinne. Corinne, kiss. Why oh. wouldn't you want to kiss Corinne? Oh. I'd have to like, I'd have to get my, maybe say, tell my wife Tessa, hey, I, I, I got to give her just like a little peck on the cheek. But Corinne's amazing. I would say kiss Corinne. Franny, Francesca. Franny, kiss Francesca. Francesca, oh. Francesca's a sweetheart. You know, uh, I could not believe she got voted out first, twice. Oh, Unbelievable, yeah. ruthless, and brutal. I think that. She's very smart person, and I would have liked to have like seen her actually have a chance to play the game of Survivor. 
Yeah, I agree. She handled it with class. She um, did. All right, so here are three from this season. Uh, Chris. Chris, slap. <laughs> <laughs> Laurel. Laurel, kiss. All right. Last yeah. one. Donovan. Donovan, give me my give me my options again, Billy. Uh, kiss, slap, hug, run away, or wrestle. I would give Donovan the biggest hug when I meet that guy. <laughs> I, I, I think Donovan's a sweetheart, and and I, I literally when I meet him, I envision me just giving Donovan a big hug and being like, "What's up, brother?" Same Good here. Job. Same here. All right. So Hilda has the question. Uh, what was your reaction to not being allowed on stage at the reunion? That was a tough pill to swallow, man. Um, it was one of those things. It's the first time in the history of Survivor in any season at all where the entire cast was not on the stage at a reunion. Here's the deal, dude. I was not – it wasn't about, oh, I need to be on the stage because Jeff Probst is going to ask me a question. I didn't care. I figured out, you know, I got voted out early in my season. There's no way he's going to talk to me anyways. But it was the the closure that you look for. Yeah. The finale is the closure to this experience, which is a once in a lifetime experience. And it was a slap in the face totally. to, to, to all of us. And even Michael Snow and all the people that were on the stage were freaking pissed off. So I think it was complete and utter... BS, and I hope it never happens to anyone else um, in the history of this game. I'm with you on that, brother. I was fortunate that uh, my season was one of the very rare seasons where everybody got talked to, except for Sekou, who traded in his talk to play with the band. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Man. Yeah, yeah, but we all got talked to, and I was the second boot, and I got and I got a long, long segment. Yeah, um, that's awesome, man. So yeah, that uh, to, to me that shows that it can be done. That right. it's not a question of oh, we don't have enough time. My season shows it can be done. Yeah, my whole my whole reunion show and everything, it was ridiculous. It, it was terrible and stupid. And they interviewed a bunch of people. No one cares as, as a fan of survivor. You want to hear from the cast. Yeah. You, you don't care about some guy in the audience or some pop star or whatever you want to hear from the cast. And that was totally taken away from, from my season. And it still pisses me off. I hear you, brother. I hear you. I'm with you on that. All right. So uh, Gene wants to know if there are any funny pre-jury trip stories that you can recall. Yeah. Um, so, you know, as you know, you, you know, you go on a pre-jury, you know, trip. You got to stay out of the country. We went to Malaysia. Nice. You can check, you can check out pictures on my Facebook um, probably somewhere from that trip. Um, we went to a water park somewhere in Malaysia and me and Corinne, I remember like walking around, we go up on this water slide to ride this water slide. And there's supposed to be people that are working at the water park. Right. Yeah. Well, there's the guy that was supposed to be working, like putting you on the water slide was completely passed the hell out <laughs> at, the, at the top of the water slide. Like, so it definitely was like very sketchy, but the, the sketchiness of the water park made it that much greater and fun. We had an absolute and utter blast on on our trip. So, yeah, we my trip. Uh, we went to Northern Australia, and where we were, like you know, my season was divided by race and all that, and yeah, and, and right. like literally, like there was only one person from the white tribe that got voted out pre-jury. And then the rest of us was like this eclectic group. We had Cowboy, who was this long-haired Asian. You had yeah. myself. And uh, uh, and then the, the the one that did get voted out from the white tribe was Flicka, who had like dreads and these tattoos all over. So we show up for breakfast in, in, in Northern Australia, this one spot. And we were so, so different. Like literally the news showed up and pulled out cameras and we're supposed to be laying low because we're to the pre-jury oh, yeah. trip. Yeah. So, yep, yep. so Sekou, who's Mr. Straight and Narrow starts panicking and he goes and runs to the, to the, uh, to the handlers 
and he tells him that we're being recorded and videoed. And so Mark Burnett literally had to come and confiscate the video from wow. <laughs> from the news that, that it was That's crazy, dude. So, so we were the bad kids. <laughs> that, that's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. So I our love la- it. thanks. Our last question is from Granny Survivor. Uh, <laughs> and uh she's another one that does these games and loves these loves playing these games. Uh she says, Hello dears, uh another uh, good episode. Um, he would have bought everything that Michael would have said about the double idol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of us would have. So yep. here's her game. It's basically true and false. Um, so far, so far, we had like a uh, Figgy is the only one with like a winning record on this thing so far. So I'm I'm pulling for you to have a winning record here. <laughs> right on, right on. So heroes, healers, and hustlers currently holds the records. For the most idols found with nine. Um, true. Wow, you're off to a good start. You're one and zero here. <laughs> All right, you're right. It is true. The earliest use of a hidden immunity idol was on day three, uh, Redemption Island, when uh, Christina Kell played it on herself. False. Wow, you're two and zero. Oh. You are the man. All right. Uh, she actually played it on day five. <laughs> so here we go. Number three. Sandra received her first vote to be voted out after seventy-five days playing Survivor. Um, let me see that here. So her, you know, her first vote after seventy-five days. Yeah, total days. Like that was the first time anybody had voted. Ever to vo- voted or not? Oh, true. Yep, you got that one. You three. I, you guaranteed yourself a winning record, even if you get these last two wrong. So you, you're you and Figgy. All right. So uh, all right. Here's here's. This is gonna be a hard question to ask because it's about me. So I'm gonna put on my poker face here, so I don't give nothing yeah. away here. <laughs> right. Billy Garcia was considered for Heroes versus Villains. Are we? But was turned, but turned it down. True. Wow. Unfortunately, it's a false. <laughs> I've never been asked back. Those bastards. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I hear you, dude. I know you would love to play again, but you, you never know when, you know, you get called they need a certain type of person. And I know many people that have gotten called back that have said no, or it's not the right time or I can't with my job. Wow. Wow. Well, if they ever need someone that'll send Jeff Probst back into therapy, I'm their guy. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag bring back Billy Garcia. All right. Last one here. Last one. The earliest tie vote in survivor history occurred on a day three. Earliest tie vote, true. Yep, you got it. It was on Survivor of Korong. Right on. So yeah, you were you were four and one. You got the best record of the season so far. You're the man to beat. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> right on, dude. Right on. That's fun. It, it's it's uh, you know, I I know a lot of people that are really experts at Survivor trivia. For me, I've I've been a fan since day one. I applied in 2003 to get on. No one ever called me, I, and I only applied one other time, which is the time that I got on for Survivor Caramoan. So nice. it's uh, it's so great to be a part of this family, and thanks again for having me on. I always get a kick out of uh, talking about Survivor, dude. Uh, thank you for, cam- for coming on. And, uh, yeah, this is, you know, such a great fraternity, such a great family. Um there's really only one guy that I've never ever gotten along with, no mention here. Um, but everybody else, everybody else has, has, has been so great in this family that I'm, I'm so glad to be a part of it. And I'm glad that you've come on. This is, this is like, 
the closest thing we've ever come to like to a jam session. <laughs> so. That's right. So, so rewind. So, it, it, does does the guy's um, name rhyme with uh, brain hours? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, now you're five and one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh uh, my gosh! Right, <laughs> On that note, <laughs> brother, thank you so much for coming on, dude. It's it's my pleasure, Billy. Keep doing what you're doing, dude, and uh, I'll see you in June at Reality for Diabetes. Can't wait, brother. Can't wait. Hell yeah! Thank you for listening to the Oz Network's Survivor Ghost Island Recap. Thank you for listening to the Oz Network. Don't forget to subscribe to get new episodes delivered to your speakers every week. For more information, hit us up at theoznetwork.net.